evening, gentle listener, and welcome to Distractable. Join me in a huzzah for the gent's first bonus episode. Huzzah! This week, Mark reveals the dire challenges of the Redwood Rangers. Ten Fingers Bob bounds into burrows and tortures beautiful wood. Wade admits his dad is made of herpes and insists all carpenters are chewing their faces off. From meth addicts to mortality from tree attacks. Yes, it's time for the birds. Now sit back and prepare to be distracted and enjoy the show. March 31st, 2023. Did we ever air the video episode thing of us talking about the thieves in the Redwoods? It was a live, and I believe those are all unavailable. Oh, didn't we record it at the same time? Yes, we did. Isn't it here on this software that we're using? Somewhere? Good luck finding it, Will. <laughs> it's called Distractable Live from months ago. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that bit about the knots in the Redwoods was good, Mark. Yes. Good stuff. <laughs> and what? What? Yes. So I was transitioning back from it. Yes. Yeah, yes, we went to, we man, went to the video. If, we, if Will, Will found cut that. away to that and then came <laughs> and then we brought it back and really landed it back in now. Actually, I think that I was like a 30 bit minute bit, so I don't know. I don't know if that could be it was put there, right there. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, it was like it was like half of an entire live that we did. The um, burls. The burls. The burls. Well, That's isn't that in the distractible to go discord aren't we called the burls yeah that we are our role it was such that's a why big that is influential thing and i'm like if if that just got fit in there and will found it you just had half your episode taken care of bob you don't oh, need to do i don't even need to be here <laughs> done thank you so much for listen watching don't cut print was i dr i have zero recollection of any of this you really don't remember the whole bit about the meth addicts and None. stealing the burls and going Going to rob a house because you thought they had burls or something. It was a whole thing we went down. Well, they just watched it. They know. Yeah, the oh, people okay. definitely right, saw well. it. Right, Will? <laughs> this sounds like <laughs> something I wasn't even present for. You were there! You were on video. There's proof that it was you. Was this at the couch at the place? No, no! it was not in person. It was, it was a live we did uh, from our homes on this platform right here at the Riverside. Virginia. Oh, that's great. July 19th, 2022. The strange underground economy of tree poaching. Ooh. I hear those are hard to catch. Yes. Dude, I bury so... my wood sometimes too. <laughs> wait, wait. Thank oh, you, thank you. yeah. I'll be All here right. till they replace me, everyone. So people have been poaching trees. On the morning of March 27, 2018, rangers from Redwood National and State Parks put on their bulletproof vests and jumped into their cars. Their destination wasn't far, a house in the small town of Oric, California, the same town as the park headquarters where the rangers are based. Pulling up to the house, they grabbed their AR-15s, guns in hand, they pounded on the door, shouting they had a search warrant. Mm. One of the residents opened the door and the rangers began searching the premises. Two of them rounded the property and went into the backyard where there was a shed holding their semi-automatic rifles up ready to shoot. They entered the shed and found their suspect Derek Hughes who said quote if you shoot me you're going to have all hell to pay. Oh, whoa. <laughs> What does Derek know? <laughs> he knows where the wood be. They, they hand, hand <laughs> doesn't know where the wood be. <laughs> he buried his wood too, Wade. I know. <laughs> Get your Maybe you're part of this crime syndicate here. The park rangers handcuffed Hughes. Searching the premises, they found brass knuckles, a handgun, a camera they suspected was stolen from the park, a plastic bag with traces of methamphetamine, and four meth pipes. But the rangers weren't there for any of that. They continued searching for what they were really looking for, and scattered along a fence, under a tarp, and in a woodworking shop, they found it. Chunks. Wood of illegally poached redwood. Mm. So, 
What has been happening is people have been poaching pieces of redwood, which I believe the entire forest, the Redwood National Forest, is all protected. All of those trees are protected. Um, so stealing any of it is extremely bad, such to the point that park rangers will pull up with rifles ready to shoot you because yeah. of that. I don't know why the quote is, if you shoot me, you're going to have all hell to pay, because that's quite a statement. I feel like that's when, got a lot of stuff behind it. That's got the entire so forest will be after you. <laughs> yeah, that... Redwoods do just... travel in packs. <laughs> God, give me like, Ents from Lord of the Rings come out, but Redwoods. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't just any tree we're holding. Oh. It's the tree Bassiter's daughter. <laughs> you all tried to protect us, but if we don't poach the weak... The redwoods overall are weakened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I'm trying to read more into the. Apparently, they are after a specific part of the tree called the burl. Anus. Oh, okay. Basically. The burl anus. So, Bur Bourgeois describes burls as big, gnarly bumps on the trees that are covered in bark. And they form after the tree has experienced a bit of distress. Bourgeois says. Sometimes that means a fungal infection or a lightning strike, and or maybe they survived a fire, and the burrow is a tree directing all of its resources into healing that area. And in doing so, it creates a burrow that holds a lot of genetic information. Uh, My desk often is made out of uh, redwood herpes. Go on, Mark. Um, and often new trees will sprout from the burl because it contains a lot of genetic material. But be burls may be important to health of trees, but they're also financially valuable, sometimes fetching thousands of dollars for a slab because they produce this really lovely piece of grained wood that's very easy to carve because it's smooth. You don't get blemishes or knots. People turn them into tables, sculptures, and statues. They have been used in luxury goods made abroad, like in the consoles of cars wow so all of this all the guns all the uh, the meth all of the drama is, <laughs> Wait, for is the meth tables. part of it <laughs> i think the meth might you gotta be part do of meth it. to get into this yeah. industry it's <laughs> easier to sand a table if you're on meth it was, everyone it knows faster, this. I guess. everyone yeah. knows. if you're gonna work in woodworking teach. you better be high as shit before you all, operate those machines all woodworkers <laughs> are on meth we're Not getting to make the any bottom bone of the claims, truth here. but <laughs> you heard it here first, that distractible live. If you touch it a wood, you touch it a drug. <laughs> you want to make it a table? You better <laughs> suck it a crystal. <laughs> was, I'm, I'm trying to channel Wade here. You, you, you oh got me God. beat on the one luck. This, like, it, quote-unquote Italian mobster that's like the gang <laughs> boss trying to give a lesson on how to steal wood. It's me. The mob's the boss, though. <laughs> got a very uh, particular you think set you of skills. You can climb a tree without meth? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you. Um, tell you what's what. Is that two pipes, Johnny? <laughs> <laughs> they call me Ten Fingers Bob. <laughs> Robert's not a very good mobster name. Bob's only okay, <laughs> but at least it's shorter. Oh, anyway, so they uh, have been dealing with this rising in crime for the last 15 years. Back then, in the beginning, it was just theft of dead logs, like redwood logs um, that they would poach and just drag out of the forest. You know, it's basically just like lying there. Still not okay. Um, and they weren't chopping down live streams. But now it's like a hit and run operation where they spot the burls. They see burls and they go for it with chainsaws and axes and they get the burls out and then they pile them on a truck and then whoosh, they're out. For a couple thousand per burl, like, I can definitely see how people would be incentivized. If people are stealing catalytic converters and they're stealing pipes out of houses, like a... a, a piece of a tree probably seems like oh that would be less serious nope park <laughs> rangers bulletproof vests ar-15s rolling up to your house taking all your meth you ain't gonna have no meth you ain't gonna have no burls so i feel gone. like I, I don't know if there is but i feel like there should be <laughs> downstream consequences for this situation wait you go you go to like a boutique woodworking shop and there's a brand new redwood coffee table just sitting there Park Ranger walks in and is like, hey, is that, is that Redwood? Like, 
Oh, well. Are you a cop? You have to. You can't lie. <laughs> <laughs> it depends. Like, are yeah. you a cop? Like, where I know, I know that there are ways that a person can still get redwood for that purpose that are like legal. Like if it's salvaged from a building, if it's already chopped down and used, you can like salvage it or whatever. But mm. I'm, this whole thing over thousands—I mean, thousands of dollars—is not nothing. But this is a lot of. This is a whole cottage industry of weird. Who needs a table that bad? And how? Huh, I don't know. It's just weird to me. <laughs> it is. It is very strange. What it all Once amounts to. Once you go to. redwood, it's a very addictive wood. It's hard to go with any other one after <laughs> the, that. The real driver here is the the woodworkers. Once they touch the redwood, once they've worked with the burl, <laughs> they refuse to work with the other type. They just can't stand any other wood in their hands. Yeah, that's where the addiction starts. Meth's the only thing that can, can <laughs> cut the edge Meth of that. Gets them from burl to burl. <laughs> <laughs> you ever come across a, boat, a woodworker who looks really haggard and out of it? It's been too long since he's burled. Well, that's one of the ways the park rangers are able to detect this is they come in with photographs of the trees and if the guys start like itching their necks when they see the burl they know mm -hmm. yeah. they actually have a little glass vial of a sample of burl and they walk up and pop it open and they're like huh Did do anything for you huh you little burl head sweating. I'm as a not knowing what you want I mean people will always I guess if it's especially because it's off limits there's always going to be guys who are like God, I want that. I want a rhinoceros horn on my wall. I don't know why. I just need it. <laughs> you like, walk in, you see the mounted rhinoceros, and there's just part of a tree on a plank. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's just a big burl, un untouched, <laughs> just sawed <laughs> off of a tree and hung on the wall. I got like, people, that one back in 74. <laughs> people always do that shit, but that, I mean, it's it's wood. Redwoods are cool. Have you guys been to like the Redwood Forest or like Mere Woods no, in the Bay or anything? No, sad. I saw a picture. It's beautiful. Of one. It's That's crazy. Oh, They're huge. God, yeah. But yeah. um, can't you just get a redwood seed and then just grow your own tree? Yeah, they sell burl? they sell little just saplings. Uh, actually, in my at our house, we have two redwoods in the front in the backyard and one in the front yard that are like. Do you have any burls? Not yet, <laughs> but I'm gonna start torturing the shit out of those trees. <laughs> need, they need some the goddamn burls. <laughs> I'm gonna get, go out there with a car battery, like, come on, talk to me. <laughs> Daddy needs his burl. <laughs> but yeah, like I don't. This is just a weird one. I, I will say though, I, there's a little history. We've been to Mere Woods a couple times in the in, it's in the Bay Area, and um, I can't imagine. I know at like the in the 19th century. And, you know, in the beginning of the country, everyone was looking for anything where it's like, oh, well, we need resources. We need to expand. You know, we're, we're just trying to survive. But people got out here and there were redwoods that are like 30 feet across. Like it's a tree that's the size, the, the length of a truck and hundreds of feet tall. And like you look at that huge fucking tree and you're like, oh, I got to destroy that. That's got to <laughs> become like a dozen houses. And yeah. sure, you need the wood. I get that. But. How could you destroy something that's so fucking incredible and like awe inspiring? And you look at it and you're like, how did this grow? It's a plant. And it's, you know, it's like the biggest, one of the bigger organisms on the whole planet is these big ass trees that are insane. But is, you know, it's a different time. It's because you go over to your buddy and you're just like, I wonder what kind of sound that makes when it hits the ground. <laughs> Can you if a imagine? tree falls and there's no poachers in the forest, does it really make us money? You go over to your buddy and you're like, hey, I saw that raccoon we were chasing. He's up that one. We got to take him down. <laughs> and then you just attack the whole tree. I did limb it for one limb. time. One time. What they found out was the best way to get the other trees burling was to cut down one in the middle and make them all watch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this one's the mom. Next. They're all Don't gonna to burl out of grief if we kill this one. <laughs> well, what's crazy too is they didn't have like power tools, right? So there, there, there are pictures of dudes with the world's longest saws standing on top of red. It was just like 30 guys axing and sawing at the base of a tree that was bigger than a whale and eventually it fell over it's kind of impressive i guess but also 
Maybe cut down some... You could have cut down like a, a hundred normal sized trees in the time it must have taken to cut down the one largest tree you could find in the How forest. How do you move a downed redwood? Are they only taking the burls or are they taking the whole no, tree? No, you like... You mill it there, right? It falls over in place and then you basically cut chunks off and take those away. Can't... It's not like floating a log down a river where you can... Are they putting them in trucks or do they have like helicopters with like those big nets that they, they move the Tyrannosaurus like, in? Donkeys or just manpower donkeys. to just I it's not a joke. I think they use like pack what? animals to like drag them out or humans to just like carry them out. Like a lot of people or animals. Yeah. I was looking up like um how many people die from getting hit by a falling redwood because I imagine it had to happen. <laughs> um probably all has, of them. And it, well if you just put your happens... hands up and catch it, it won't kill you. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, wait, you try that, you try that. That's so why everyone you does that, that in movies, you know what saves you. <laughs> <laughs> that'll, that'll stop it, you break it, you break the fall with your arms. Mm -hmm. Or run directly away from it, as fast as you can, straight you'll make line. it. Just yeah, make sure you line. stay in the shadow of it as you're running. How many people died, Mark? Uh, so 21 people a year die in the uh, Redwood National Forest. Only six of those are from car crashes. Um, so the rest of those are either from animal attacks or tree attacks. Or and people I'm gonna guess, attacks. Or what? People attacks. No, that doesn't happen. Why would that happen? Well, there's got to be like Redwood Ronnie that lives out there. Just like, <laughs> are you a poacher? Redwood Ronnie. <laughs> <laughs> Redwood Ronnie, the menace of the national Are you coming forest. for my, what are they called? Bumples? What, what my burl. Yeah, my you burls. Forget? We've said it so many times. I know, and I already <laughs> forgot. <laughs> <My> burl. <laughs> You burling, man. You burling. <laughs> you get away from my bumples. Ronnie, they're <laughs> called burls. I call them bumples. Who's Redwood Ronnie? Me. Maybe. Who's Redwood Ronnie and who's Honey? Which one of us lives out here? <laughs> That's how he points. Yeah. Oh, anyway, so the last uh, fatality from a falling Redwood that I can see uh, was in 2019. So they died while walking on a marked dirt trail. So it was a normal trail um, in the park north of San Francisco, famous for its towering trees, according to the Marin County Coroner's Office. I don't know what would be left if you got hit by a redwood. I feel like that is the most obliteration you could probably experience. Yeah, I mean, it really... There. So in the... I will say the a lot of the oldest growth ones were cut down, but there are still mm. a lot of big ones. But there are also a lot of redwoods that are range from, you know, six inches to maybe a couple feet that aren't, like, insanely huge yet. Mm -hmm. um, so it would depend. Because I feel like if, if, if you know, a foot-wide one hit you, it would sort of just... Oh, it doesn't take Turn much. your middle 60% into some human jam. Mm -hmm. when, but if, um, like, a whole big-ass one, you would you'd return to the earth, really. <laughs> you would, we had an you ice would. storm, um, like... Man, probably sometime during high school, there was a big ice storm that we had like during spring break one year. And I know there was a person outside in their yard and just like a normal tree because of the weight of the ice, it broke off a branch when they were outside and the branch landed on them and killed them. And that was just like a normal Jeez. tree. Redwood, I imagine, like it, wouldn't, it would take a lot less. Yeah, one branch from a redwood's like a tree itself. So you, well, you I think it's more like the height up. that it probably falls from because of the acceleration hitting you oh, more so God, than. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it doesn't take much. So the ultimate not to obliterate you maybe, but just to the kill ultimate you pile driver would be like a three hundred foot redwood, and you're standing exactly where the tip would hit. <laughs> oh, and yeah. so you angle yourself, <laughs> like you you use your your trigonometry to be able to know the triangle distance, and then you wait for it, and you find the right spot, and that would have maximum acceleration to really like slam you into the dirt. It would. And it then would you stand have, as straight as possible. It would have less mass that far up because it'd be so skinny but it'd be like a whip those things are bendy if you ever stand oh, if wonder. you're ever in a redwood forest and stand under them they the tops move back and forth so much like mm. ease like tens of feet so that thing on the way down would just be like Whoosha! like crazy whipping you know acceleration mathematicians yeah. in chat calculate on average which part of the redwood would obliterate you the most to fall on you That'd be great. Do Can we so get like should a we graph, stand? A force graph, you know. Yeah. Uh, Trigonometry. Like, it's gotta be like a <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. There's right. gotta be a point where too far is less force, but there's a sweet spot yeah. somewhere there. Uh, Probably hey, a wait. golden ratio bullshit. I don't know if this is for you guys, but part of my motivation for wanting to like win at podcast 
game is I'm not going to drop a name, but when we were getting it organized before we had launched, uh, the company, uh, Wood Elf or Q-Code, someone who was working, helping us get it set up, was reaching out to other podcast people mm -hmm. and was like, hey, would you want to like collab or be a guest or whatever? And one, uh, one in particular we got feedback on, who's like a very successful podcast, the host, they, they presented us to the host, and this person was like, oh, no, oh, fuck no, no way, get the, no, I don't want to be involved. And so, like, I'm not going to say your name, but to you in particular, who I know who you are, fuck you, and also... Your dreams. And your your dreams and your nightmares, yes. Yeah, it was literally, I think the quote was, um, I think I don't it, remember this at all. I think, I think I was named in the quote because it was like, Markiplier, the YouTuber? Yeah. <laughs> no fucking way. Yeah. And so, this is why we are, to all the people in the podcast world, Fuck your dreams, fuck your nightmares. We're coming for you. We're coming for you. We're going to take your burls. <laughs> All your burls. I'm going to have a burl table in every room after this. <laughs> when we win at podcasts, I'm going to have so many burls. Mm -hmm. We're yeah. the lightning that's going to strike your content and make you burl up. Mm. The poachers are coming. <laughs> you, whoa, you mad, bro? You burling? You burling, bro? Calm down. <laughs> Dude, I got burls all over my penis. I don't know what happened. It's looking a little burly. <laughs> she said there was no static electricity. <laughs> anyway, so um, I think this will probably... We could probably bring this live stream to a close. Yeah, get out of here. Uh, fake podcast out. All right, bye. See you next week. See you next mm -hmm. week. Probably. Okay, I'm clicking it. We'll see what happens. <laughs>